Hey guys, Stay Patient here, back with another Fallout 4 video, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to modify your power armor. So if we head upstairs to where my power armor is kept, we have five pieces laid out, and you'll notice that I have this, the power armor station, which is very important. Now when you first come to Sanctuary, this will be located behind the building that I'm facing now sort of just to the other side, it's right next to the workshop that you get introduced to as part of the story anyway. So what you can do is go into your building menu and grab it and bring it to wherever you want it to be. Now when you click on it, it's gonna allow you to craft or modify the armor that is currently equipped on the closest suit of armor. So I've got one parked up conveniently right next to it. But if I back out of here, just to um, show you how this works, I'm going to move this piece of armor out of the way and show you what happens if there is no armor parked right next to this station. So if we take a few steps forward in this particular suit, get it way out of the way, <clears throat> and then jump out. Now to get out of the suit of armor, um, just in case anyone's struggling with this, you hold down the X button on PlayStation or the A button on Xbox and that will sort of exit you, eject you from the suit. Now if I was to click on the, the actual armor station, what happens is it sort of teleports the closest suit of armor up to the station so that you can work on it. So if I back out of this again, you'll see that the suit of armor, I think from the right hand side was probably closest, yeah. So the suit that was stood here, you probably noticed when I came up the stairs, we had two on either side, and the one that I moved is still over there, and the closest one is the one that's now being worked on. But when you're, when you're sort of modifying, you want to be able to modify the armor on all your different suits without having to move those suits around, because of course it would be a bit of a pain if you had to move this one out the way and then move one of these closer and then get out and activate the station and keep moving them all around, you'd be wasting your fusion cores and wasting time. But what you can do is um, not only can you modify the armor that's currently equipped on that closest suit, but you can modify any armor that's currently in your inventory. So if I come up to this suit, for instance, and take the helmet and the left arm, I will now be able to go up to the station and we can now modify both those pieces as well. So that's that's very useful, guys. That's that's you know how you go about modifying all of your armor without having to move your suits around. But I'm just going to show you the different options for modifying this armor now. If I just uh, go and grab one other piece, um, just to show you the difference between some of these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, left arm on there and that should put the other left arm in my inventory okay so <clears throat> now I'm over encumbered but <laughs> we'll try and get, get back to the station here okay so now we should have a t45 piece a t51 piece and a t60 piece now as you can see we've got um, let's look at the t45 now a t45b it has on the stats on the left there it has 120 and 80, they are the two damage resistances when it comes to normal damage and then energy damage. So 120 and then 80. Now the T51 helmet is 160 and 130. So that's higher, it's the same piece, same body part, but it's higher protection. <clears throat> and then if we compare the T60 left arm with the T51 left arm, uh, T51 is 110 and 100 and then the T60 is 150 and 125. Now I know some of you are probably thinking, well, some of this has got winterized coating on, which adds extra protection and stuff, but I'm just showing you that basically the higher the number, it does correlate to a better damage resistance if the number of the, like the T, the T number, if it's higher, then it's, it's better basically. Um, and when it comes to the letter that comes after the number, let me show you what that refers to. Because when you click on this helmet, for instance, you have three or four different options depending on what body part it is. We have an extra option here just because it's the helmet, we have the option of changing the color of the headlamp. But um, 
the three main options are these three. So the model, that is the B, that's where the B comes in. Um, now I haven't bought any of the perks that relate to crafting. And the reason for that was explained in one of my other videos. It's because you can technically create high level weapons and normal armor just uh, without needing these perks because you can take the mods off other weapons and reuse them on the weapons that you want to keep, etc. So, um, so that's why I haven't bought any of these perks that allow me to get these high levels. But of course, if you're using the power armor a lot, then you might want to invest in science and armor so that you can get these uh, higher level models. But there we go, that's the B. So if it, for instance, said um, T51F, that would mean that the model was F and it was the highest possible protection you could get. Now the second option is the paint that you use, uh, you know, whatever color you want the actual armor piece to be. Now these colors aren't just cosmetic, they do have bonuses as well. So some of these will increase one of your special stats. For instance, the Hot Rod Flames paint increases agility, but when it increases one of these special stats, it also says um, increases agility with all pieces painted. So you do need to have every single piece of the armor painted in that color so that you get that agility upgrade. Because otherwise you could mix and match pieces and, and you could have like all of your special stats increased all at the same time, which would be a bit OP. So you need to decide on one color and color the entire suit that color, unless you are using one of these other upgrades. So if you're using titanium plating or winterized coating or explosive shielding, all three of these uh, refer to increasing one of your particular damage resistances. So for instance, the winterized coating, if I was to unequip that, my energy resistance would go down to 110, but with it equipped, it goes up to 130. Now the titanium has um, extra health, so it doesn't show up on the actual stats, but it does give you more health and the explosive is more protection, um, yeah, more protection against explosions, obviously. So in this case, if you're using these different colors, you could mix and match these three in particular ones, but you couldn't then have one of these others like military or hot rod or vault tech. You couldn't throw one of them in and expect to get the upgrade to your charisma or to your strength uh, because you know you need the entire suit colored that color to be able to get those particular upgrades um, and then the final one is the miscellaneous mod now again I haven't bought any of the crafting perks so I can't use any of these but obviously you can choose between them depending on what you have available so there you have it guys that's the that's the main sort of features of upgrading your different uh, pieces of armor of course the headlamp is just cosmetic for the different colors um, now, if you do need to repair any of your pieces, um, you'll see at the bottom it's got triangle for repair or Y on the Xbox. And because all my pieces here are currently at full health, I can't repair any of them, I don't believe. But if you do need to repair any, you can do so there. And again, if it's in your inventory, it doesn't need to be equipped on the suit in front of you. It can be in your inventory and you can, you can modify it, you can repair it, you can do whatever you want to it as long as you're carrying it on your person. Now for that reason, it's worth uh, having a box here. So if you can sort of pop your spare armor in here, I'm gonna just put a couple of pieces in there now just so I can walk around at normal speed. But when you're out in the world, quite often you'll fight, for instance, a raider that is in power armor. Now when you kill that raider, you're not going to be able to get into that power armor. Um, it's going to be basically destroyed and he's gonna still be in it, his body's still gonna be in it, so you're not gonna be able to bring it home with you. But you can take the pieces of armor off it. So if you go into his inventory and loot him like you would with any other enemy, you can take all those individual pieces, you can bring them back, you can repair them if they need repairing. So for instance, as an example here, I've got a Raider helmet. Now, the guy that was wearing this obviously took a lot of headshots to the point where his helmet was completely destroyed. And it is so destroyed that it literally doesn't weigh anything now. I can put it in my inventory and it weighs nothing. But I can then take it to the power armor station and I can repair it uh, for three steel and that will bring it back to full health. And again, you can then equip it onto any of your other suits that you wish. And I believe um, I'm a little bit stuck now. No, I'm not, I'm okay. I'm just gonna pop the helmet back inside so that I can walk again. 
there's a couple more things I just wanted to explain, or maybe just one more thing. Um, where are we? It was the Raider helmet, wasn't it? Yeah, there we go. Now, um, one key thing to remember, which is very useful to get in the habit of doing, is to always take the fusion cores out of your power suits. Uh, now, the reason for this is because if the fusion core is still um, is still in it, then other people can use it. It's powered, so people can jump in and they can run off with it, or they can just wear down the fusion core. Now, if you're at home, obviously, if you're at Sanctuary or wherever your home is, and uh, one of your settlers gets inside it, they're not going to steal it from you, and you can ask them to get out, but of course they are going to be wearing down the fusion core as far as I know. But the, the main reason for this is because when you're out in the world, you know, you're out exploring or you're doing missions, um, you know, if you come across a new piece of armour, you can think to yourself, oh great, you know, I'm going to fast travel that home and keep it, but you might not want to go home yet, you might want to carry on exploring, you might have a mission that you're in the middle of. So in that case, if you leave the suit of armor and go off and carry on exploring, but you don't take the fusion core out, then a raider or anyone really can come along and jump in the armor and run off with it and steal it. So that when you get back to where you left the armor, it will no longer be there. So you'll have lost it. Um, and if, you're, if you go out to do a mission and take armor with you, because you know it's gonna be a tough mission, and you wear armor, but then you have to get out of the armor for whatever reason, the same thing can happen. Someone can come along and steal it. But if you take the fusion core out of it by simply going into the inventory with Square and just grabbing it, that means that now it's basically powered down. No one can use it unless they have a fusion core, but I don't believe NPCs in the world or enemies, I don't believe they carry fusion cores with them. So whenever I found a power suit, I always take the fusion core out, I carry on with my mission, I just remember where it is, and then when I've done everything I want to do and I'm about to fast travel home anyway, I quickly go back to where I left the suit, fast travel there or walk there if I'm close enough, and then I put the fusion core back in and fast travel at home. And that way it's never gone, you know, it's never been stolen while I've been carrying on with gameplay. So that's a good little tip to keep in mind, something good to get in the habit of doing, just always you know, never leaving a power suit with a fusion core in it. So I hope that's been helpful guys. As always, I really appreciate all the views. I don't do this for work or anything. I just do it for fun and it's an added bonus to know that it's helping you guys out if it is. So I do love hearing, I do love hearing feedback, pardon me. Um, and if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments section below. But thanks again for watching guys. Um, I look forward to putting out a new video for you, so don't forget to like and subscribe. In the meantime, carry on enjoying the game. I'm loving it and I hope you are too. So cheers for now and thanks again, guys.